What's up, everyone? It is Richie here, bringing you season three, episode eight of the F1 podcast. We are recording this a couple of days after the Australian Grand Prix, which a lot has happened. So we have a lot to talk about today. I want to introduce our amazing co-hosts, Andrew and Erica. Hello, both. How are you both doing? All right, mate. Yeah, right. Great, mate. It's a good day. It's a good day. Time for an avo. <laughs> I was going to try that. That's a knife, but it's not, we're not even going to try that. Okay. That's not uh, a knife. <laughs> That's a knife. <laughs> some rice this weekend, eh? You know, when, you know, Crocodile Dundee, yeah. when you say, that's, 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 that's not a knife. knife. That's a knife. You know? <laughs> that's a... <laughs> we only go down to Australia once, but we all think we're Australian. It's just so infectious. It's such a, ho- I love the accent. It's so cool. It really is. Also, the race is at like 1 a.m., uh, which did any of you stay up for? Uh, I, I did catch. I stayed up 3.30. Oh my God, did you watch the whole race live? Uh, I got to lap 55 and then I fell asleep. My goodness. Ish. And then I woke up, figured out what the hell was going on with the red flags. And it was so crazy. I actually had to like go to bed, try to digest what happened. And then I came back the next morning and watched it again. <laughs> Do a barrel roll. I was at uh, Score on King with a couple of friends and the bar was nice enough to turn on the race for me. Amazing. But then everyone was mad because I proceeded to pay zero attention to the conversation at hand and just squint at the screen and yell every once in a while. So note to self, best if I watch those in private or at a proper viewing event like those which we have held in the past. Uh, the people you're with need to understand there are priorities. Conversation about whatever is not prioritized high enough over exactly. a GP. Exactly. They just, they just don't get it. And especially if they turned and watched the race because so much went on this weekend. Um, I think it was the first time that three red flags happened in one race. I can't think of any other time this has happened. But before we get there, we have a big celebration to announce. We hit over 300 followers on Instagram this week. Now we're at 311. first off we just want to say thank you to all of our fans this is really appreciative it all is because of you guys so thank you thank you thank you so australia interesting race max verstappen wins again time out time out you you, no you got we got the fastest lap recap you can't go into this you do you can't just say (laughs) verstappen wins and then goes into the recap Gotta let that's Erica, like reading the, that's gotta like let reading Erica the last... shine. You gotta let Erica shine. Okay. That's like reading the last page of the book and before then you know the, the whole page. story. Exactly. You lose. Erica, you have a minute and 20 seconds to kind of hit this going. And, you know, I tried at it. I, I didn't do well. Andrew did pretty well. So, Erica, no pressure. Okay. This is on you. Give me one second. I feel like I need to do some tongue twisters. Red leather, yellow leather. She sells seashells by the seashore. Boom. Okay. Uh, Count me in. Tell me when. Okay. Three, two, one. Bingo. Right off the line, George Russell and Lewis Hamilton snuck past Max Verstappen with Charles Leclerc and Lance Stroll shortly behind colliding as they headed into one of the turns. Leclerc turned into Stroll, sending the Monegas careening into the gravel, bringing out a safety car in the first lap, and he was out of the race. Shortly after, Alex Albin went flying into the barriers, bringing out the race's second safety car, wherein Sainz and Russell both pitted for fresh tires, which actually ruined their race strategy as a red flag came out shortly after. It also challenged the drivers to manage their tires as this is a one-stop race, and there were over 40 laps remaining. At the restart, Verstappen started in P2 behind Hamilton, but quickly overtook him with the Red Bull straight line speed. Russell retired shortly after that on lap 18 with a fiery engine failure. We also learned that Perez is a psycho passing on the inside around some very scary turns. And Alonso tries to force Hamilton to make some mistakes to no avail in order to try to grab P2 from him. With two laps remaining, Kevin Magnuson clipped a barrier, forcing a second right flag late in the race as his car lost a tire. And at the restart, chaos ensued with Carlos Sainz sending then third place Fernando Alonso spinning off track. The two Alpines collided to knock each other out, and Nick DeVries and Logan Sargent scuffled toward the rear of the grid, gave us two more DNFs. The chaos did cause the lap to be repeated as the cars had not yet finished the first sector. And at the restart, the grid was reset, giving Alonso back P3, but relegating Sonoda from P5 back down to P11 though the other outages allowed him to gain some places. Signs also picked up a five-second penalty and a two-point loss in the other and another blow to Ferrari. The race then restarted to allow the drivers to finish with Clash of the Case and Verstappen P1, Alonso P3, Hamilton P2, and the first ever thrice-flagged race. Do a barrel roll. Good work. <laughs> wow, that's pretty fast. Impressive. 
I feel like if I, if I really tried, I could have done like a Hamilton style rap and, uh, really, oh. really just laid, oh. laid some bars down oh. because the way I was <laughs> flying through those words there with a certain, a, a certain amount of understanding and pronunciation and enunciation. Um, yeah, that was very well. Done. I, I think I need to go have a, a nap. I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> So while Erica gets her breath, John, what are your initial thoughts of the race? I felt, oh man, um, <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to say this in the nicest way possible. I, I I generally think there were some good racing this weekend, and we saw a lot of drivers do some really intense battling. However, the three red flags threw the race completely off. Strategies were there was no such thing as strategy uh, for some of the drivers, and you know McLaren got points only because almost 55% of the grid DNF. So I have some concerns of how the, the end of the race ended. And I, and I eventually will get into that, but the Red Bulls look dominant, you know, Fernando Alonso, another podium. Yeah, it was an interesting weekend, but I am very upset with the FIA. I have a lot of questions and I'm pretty sure we'll all get into it. Yeah. You know, I think it was uh, electric would be an interesting word to describe this race. I think there's just so much going on in terms of the, you know, lap one incidents that, uh, you know, we have with Ferrari and Charles or the incident, as he would say, uh, you know, somewhat <laughs> self-inflicted in my opinion, because he sandwiched, like Stroll ended up getting sandwiched and, you know, Charles could have ran a little bit wider, but not the case. He touched, shot himself into the gravel, his second DNF in three races to begin this season. And um, I don't know if anyone's keeping it home, but I'm pretty sure Lando Norris has more points than Charles Leclerc does. I was is he gonna... really? Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is his fifth, fifth DNF on a first lap in his career. Yeah, a little bit of a mixed emotions also, too, in this race, because it had the opportunity. Like, for between, i say, the lap one incidents and then K-Mag's incident, I thought there was some really great racing. Like Perez, as as Erica mentioned, was a psycho or shall we say a king of the street circuit in a way, because the way he was doing those takeover, like those overtakes at turn 11 to that quick chicane were insane going on the it inside was, like that. It was hilarious to hear the commentators, most of whom are former racers. And like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you just heard the tone. They're like, oh my God, what is he doing? Like everyone's freaking out in the booth. Apparently, like you, they were talking about it. They were like, none of us are sitting right now. You can tell who was a driver because we're all <laughs> losing our minds. And the guys who didn't race are just sitting there stone faced. <laughs> like he was, oh, and he did it multiple times in the same spot too. And I think we also saw some of the best driving. I think we've seen a Lewis Hamilton in a long time because him and Russell were able to take a W14 who's had a lot of issues in that car. And really just put it into a window where they were challenging for P1 at times this weekend out of nowhere. Well, well it just building I, building off, they had a really good qualifying. And the only reason that Russell was not able to get on the podium is literally his engine just caught on fire. We could have seen that this was a weekend that Mercedes could have easily won the race or at least competi uh, put two of their cars in the podium position. Again, Max coming out of nowhere uh, and able to overpass. I mean, there was a little bit of miscommunication between both the Mercedes drivers. Um, there, you could see they were fighting a little bit, but you know, Ma Max was able to overtake Lewis, no problem. And you know, I think he coasted while there was a lot going on behind him. Oh, and then like Alonso had an opportunity to try and take over Hamilton, but I just don't think like Hamilton was just flawless because there's mm -hmm. there was no way that uh, Alonso was being able to close that gap to the DRS point. And then we're gonna get into it, but I think. I, the real, real big negatives this weekend, in my opinion, though, were Pirelli itself, themselves, and the FIA. That's For right. Pirelli, I think it's really stupid about how their new tire temp regulations fucking figure it out. We've had the reason why there were so many crashes this weekend is because guys can get tires under temperature. And combined with the FIA sort of idea in terms of reducing the tire temperatures in the tire blankets itself, they, they can't they can't warm up the lap like the time. The tires enough in a formation lap clearly was mm -hmm. evident in the qualifying win. Sometimes they needed to actually do like full on race lap before they did their qualifying lap just to get the tires into a window for it to perform. It, it, the track temperature is really low. like they need to sort it out at Pirelli and the FIA because that is why 
we had all these crashes this weekend and cost teams a ton of money. It's also why we had that crazy little backup just before one of the restarts. Do you remember that? Like after the first flag, I mean, Lewis Hamilton wouldn't have known. He can't see everything that's going on behind him, but he slowed down in order to give himself some more time to like really kind of speed up, work some temperature into the tires right before they got to the grid. And there was this little backup that happened in behind. Someone drove through the gravel off to the side. It was chaotic to say the least and a bit of a mess, but it's because they were trying to like, you know, you're at the front of the grid. You're like, what's going to give me the advantage over Max Verstappen as we're restarting this race? I need to have temperature in my tires to give myself a snowball's chance in hell of making it through. And uh, it was just bizarre. Like, and especially after last year, all the issues we had with getting temperature into hard tires and stuff. I don't really understand why anyone's thinking that continuing to mess with the temperatures in the way that they are is the right call. Yeah, because also too, when you, like you can see the amount of times like drivers are just pretty much skating into turn one, right? Mm-hmm. They, they had no grip whatsoever. Evident on the second restart when Sargent just absolutely just blew into De Vries's back because you could tell he had no grip on his tires. Stroll had an incident where after I think it was the third turn in the second in the after the second red flag, he lost temp in his tire. He didn't have no temp in his tires. He didn't skate into the gravel directly. Everyone's having a big struggle with it during the race. And that also led to the Albin crash because he was all of a sudden the tire temps just flipped on him. And that's how he spun, lost the rear and boom into the side wall. So like probably really got to figure out it from a consistency standpoint to, you know, maybe allow on these colder weekends, let's boost the tire temp on the bank. It's up work with the FIA in doing so, because, you know, this is compromising safety at some point too. Yeah. When you have eight people DNFing with the majority of them being out due to crash. And I think I just want to build on that, Andrew. Is it is it this season or is it next season that they're going to remove the the tire wraps? Is it, sorry, the blankets. blankets. Next yeah. season's been proposed, which is you're kidding. Stupid, stupid, so stupid. Oh my goodness! And to boot, like I think about a circuit like this, and it's a low friction track to begin with, so you're already going to struggle to make and maintain contact. Nevertheless, when your tires aren't warm enough to give you proper grip. Wow. If you don't even have the blankets on the tires, you are asking for trouble. And the thing is, is that like a lot of people who've been involved in the sport in a long time kind of appreciate the fact that F1 has become safer and the cars are more reliable. So you are getting races where all the cars cross the finish line. Like the commentators were talking about that today. Like think back 50 years ago, like it wasn't uncommon for maybe half the grid to not make it through an entire Grand Prix. In my mind, like I I think it's more fun when we have 20 cars because then you mm-hmm. get more action and I don't want it to go where every week we only have 12 of 20 cars finish a race no and i feel like it's a disservice to the fans because you have if your track ends with 12 people it's just like yes your fantasy gets screwed over because like half the grid is almost is, is is dnf do you really want this to happen every week no the reason i say sometimes it can be though quite interesting and electric in a way is because you get these un you get these interesting point positions so for instance right like having both mclarens finish in the points like having Piastri finish, having his first points finish in the F1 at his home GP. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind that. of like the pro sometimes of these crazy um, races where we have these like shock results, quote unquote. You know, we were almost at a point where we had Nico Hulkenberg getting in the podium spot for the first time in his career. We'll get into the FIA because I'm sure John has a lot to say about this. So I think the problem for me, and maybe I'm just being biased because they're coming from a Ferrari fan, but I had major concerns towards the end of the race, particularly where we saw that was like, was it not considered like a real lap? And then science get pe- got science got penalized. He clearly was turning and then Alonso came into him. I know I had there was just so many confusions and it's like we've seen in Italy where the race ended under a safety car and especially with this so much carnage has happened like why didn't this end up under a safety car I think I can understand where I think in Italy that it hit the time I don't know if it was the time per se uh, like a time limit but I'm, I'm probably blanking here I don't know it's some consistencies like this it's not fair and like you see how frustrated Carlos Sainz was because he had to hold back his comments or or he had, I think it was a Montoya, had to hold back his comments or it's like, I will get fined. 
if I say anything publicly. And I don't even know if Ferrari even challenged uh, the stewards on this. It was crazy because like to restart the lap was the right call by the rule book because majority of the cars were not through sector one. But I agree with you. I feel like the penalty was completely unfair and unwarranted. Like we've seen way wilder stuff happen that was very much more intentional or dangerous with little to no penalty. And to have what appears to be just a normal incident of racing when you're in close quarters with people turn into not just a five second penalty, but there was the two point loss as well, from what I recall. Think about it. All of the other rules that have been broken beyond belief and people have not had a point deduction. And then this tiny little racing incident warrants a two point deduction. Yeah, I'll just add in there before I turn over to you, Andrew. But like, I would argue that Logan Sargent probably deserved a penalty for hitting debris in the back like that. I mean, maybe I, I don't know if the, the Leclerc and the Alonso was considered a penalty, but I don't know. It's just like we talk about this all the time is consistency. And I felt like this weekend, there was no such, the word consistency did not even exist in the dictionary. Yeah, like I had two major issues with the circus this weekend. One being how they called the red flags a lap after the incident. So you have guys, you know, the safety car comes out, then you have teams that are like basing on that strategy of the safety car, go in, and then, oh, boom, red flag. I'm like, figure it out. Like, you can figure out that red flag as soon as the safety car gets called. If, if you need to, right? And you're, you're legit screwing teams on providing an active strategy. Like, George was incredibly screwed by this scenario. Mm-hmm. Even Toto yeah. was, and even said, Toto, I think you guys made the right call in that case because it was a safety car, a full lap happened, and then it's like, oh, no, got a red flag in. You need to figure out that right away because that has a major effect on team strategy. And you are the one who gets to control when the call goes. And that could be deliberately seen as wanting to adjust the race for your own kind of thoughts and results. Yeah. And the one part that was nuts is that in in that particular incident, because that's when Albin crashed mm-hmm. out when everyone came into the pits, is that people were, I mean, like at first you're thinking, okay, the car's like kind of hanging over toward the race line. It might take them a sec, but they called the red flag for the gravel. Like that's what they said was the result of it was like, oh, we need to move some gravel. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's something you can deal with under a safety car. It does not need to be a red flag in the race. It's get a brush and go swipe up. Like just sweep it up. And we've had worse debris left on track before. And it, again, it's just under a safety car. The cars kind of funnel in, they get a little bit closer, they go by, you pick stuff up while they're going elsewhere around the track. It's not that big a deal. Or even if it's a virtual safety car or something, just like, so they go low speed. Like, I think that could definitely happen. I also want to note that like, I think if the FIA, FIA was going to give a penalty to science there, they maybe should have done it after the race because he, uh, if you listen to his radio, he wanted to blow a casket um but no there was a lot of issues this weekend yeah he was basically and, despondent when you hear him like that's oh he's, he's in tears yeah because he's actively getting screwed over the the second red flag was just so unnecessary for a whole lot of reasons a it was really much a little bit of debris in a tire tire rubber that was in fully intact on the course you can have the safety car go slow enough so that the marshals can go pick it up clean it up quick and then you fit if you want finish under the safety car because there's precedent set in monza so what so it be but no they have to have this two lap shootout sort of idea for you know to quote unquote make it interesting which then you lead to signs getting this penalty for a collision on a lap that technically has not even happened. I Oh, my goodness. So, like, the lap doesn't even happen. You're going to give this ghost kind of five-second penalty. Oh, by the way, we're going to end in a safety car. Well, he's just going to lose. You might as well just start him back in 12th because it doesn't matter. Everyone's going to pass him. As soon as everyone gets to the line, they're going to start sprinting as quick as possible to get mm-hmm. behind signs because it's just an easy grid spot to move up. So science and he has and he has no control over it. He can't do anything in his power in that final lap to give himself a five second get break. So in a race in which he actually drove his ass off and did really great in that Ferrari, making some good moves, he made a good move on Lance early, like scored was going to score some good points. He gets yeah. actively screwed out of twelve points because. And then, you know, this goes back to timing, too. We had, you know, you know, Fred Versur even said, he goes like, 
they had 30 laps last week to figure out this whole um Alonzo incident yeah. in Jetta. And then oh, five seconds later, oh boom, five second penalty. We didn't even start the race. They need to figure out an ad- an adequate amount of time to call this. And I honestly think you had to let science go into the stewards afterwards, plead his case. And then if you give him the penalty afterwards, sure, that's fine. But don't actively screw him on the grid, trying to like make himself get some points for his team when they're already in a tough position as it is. So like I get, I'll just end on this point in particular, so we can like focus on some other other things that happened this week uh, weekend. But especially morale was already bad after the first lap with Leclerc going out because now Ferrari has scored their fewest amount of points in the first opening three races since the point system was changed in 2010. They're currently Oof. they're currently sitting at 26 points, which is one point worse than you know we talk about the 2020 season. So like you know morale was already bad after that first lap, and then this just gets hit on them. So and also can we just take in the fact that the race is not another na- race is not for another um, month, month? <laughs> 24 days, 24 days. But to anyways, be fair, well, I think that's in part because a race was pulled from the calendar. But could have been could have had time to replace it though. Could have yes, Th- but that would be too logical for them to do. So here we are. I'm surprised Stefano didn't have three races in the time because he wants to get that <laughs> thirty race <laughs> card. Monday and Friday sprint races every day. Uh, what else stood out this weekend uh, other than red flags and Ferraris? Um, Gasly's super lucky. He's not getting reprimanded by the stewards after. You know, how such of a good race he he had in that Alpine, you know, being in P5 for the majority of it, really being like the best of the rest cut sort of idea out of the top three teams, and then completely forgets to check his mirrors uh, when coming back onto the track and just bends his own teammate into the wall. I honestly, like, <laughs> there's been a lot of memes going around about, you know, they released that statement together in that video, like, hey, guys, we're all good. It's all love. And they're joking that, like, Otmar's behind them, like, holding them at gunpoint to make them (laughs) say it. (laughs) And quite frankly, I feel like that's an accurate representation of what must have had to go down in order, A, to make them be like, yeah, we're fine. We're buddies. It's all good. But also just for someone to be like, you are in the video together. You're not making your own individual statements. <laughs> like, you, you know, it's funny that we talked about this at the start of the season, that there was going to be tension between both those two drivers being two French drivers on a French team. And it's like <laughs> proving true. <laughs> but like, it was just so unnecessary. He, he could have just kept it on the left side, maybe getting a shot out the grass. But God, dude, check your mirrors. Yeah. Especially when your teammate has done nothing behind you but support you so far during the season, Akon's probably just sitting there like, what the heck just happened? What did I do? Also, P.S., this continues this guy sports curse because guess who was on the pit wall this weekend? Nico Rosberg. No, no, it was Otmar. Oh, it was who, Otmar. It was Otmar oh. doing the conversation with Sky Sports. Oh, three, no. Three, 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 that race weekends out of three where the, the team that had the principal joined the pit wall with Sky Sports, I've had a, at least one DNF. Oh my gosh. I thought you were going to say Nico Rosberg stopped by the Alpine garage this time because that would have made a lot of sense. <laughs> What's that mean where he's just kind of like this? The fire in the background yeah. <laughs> with the double <laughs> finger point? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, if I'm reading this correctly, Science is the only one who got a penalty based yes. on all that carnage. Oh yep. my goodness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think the hilarious part too is like we're talking about Gasly with penalties. He's accumulated so many reprimands at this point that if he gets any more, doesn't he miss a race? Like he's, he's two, banned. I think he's two penalty points away from that happening. Yeah. And like, I'm pretty sure that's two penalty points against your super license right there. I love Gasly dearly. I'm not surprised it's him of all people facing this problem. But dude, get is it? Here's my question because I actually don't know much about the penalty points. Is there like a certain amount of time and then they're like removed from? you like demerit points on your normal license i think it's like the end of may when it resets so you're telling me he's already got like between the last season and now he's got that many what dude i love you but get it together yeah apparently he was too frustrated to talk to uh lawrence barreto afterwards you know i I, you know too emotional can't talk i'm like dude just own up to your own mistake man like you cost your team 12, 13 points this weekend. But he is French. They are introspective and emotional, no? Mm-hmm. Louis. 
No driver has so far reached the 12 point maximum. Grosjean and Verstappen have been given the most penalty points by the stewards with 21, but this is counts expire points as the end of 2021 season. Perez and Marcus Erickson are so far the only drivers to incur penalty points in all five seasons since this was introduced in 2014. Interessante. How about 11 podiums, 11 titles on the podium this weekend, though? Yeah, that was pretty epic, not going to lie, between the three of them. I can't think of a more decorated podium than I think was the European Grand Prix in 2000. I think it was 2006 with Schumacher, Alonso, funny enough, Alonso, and I think it was Kimi Raikkonen at the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. It would have been sick if it was like we had a podium once or it was Hamilton, <clears throat> Alonzo, like because since this person and it would have been um, Vettel who retired, right? If, if it was, you know, Hamilton, Vettel and then Alonzo being all on the podium together at once, that would have been 13 World Drivers Championships. That's right. Between the three of them. Wow. 2012 was the year. My apologies. Love a live fact check. But, you know, like. In a one hand, I can see that why this race was really great to watch, but FIA did a lot of their power to kind of just twist it and make it almost fabricated in a way, the result. Well, Andrew, Andrew, before you continue, was Michael Massey at this race? <laughs> Damn right he was. He was invited. <laughs> I almost wonder if he was up and like, he was giving some pointers. He was like, probably whispering in the studio's ear, stop the race. Just tell them we went motor racing. On the track. <laughs> and out from the corner in the blue, it's going to be oh, <laughs> I almost wonder if I would love to hear some of the conversations. It's too bad they don't have the radio anymore. We have the conversation between FIA and the team principals. Oh, I know. Would have been some interesting conversations this week, especially I bet you Fred would have been blowing a gasket for the FIA saying, What the absolute hell? I miss it dearly. Please bring us back. So I think there's there's a lot to continue, a uh, lot to discuss this week, um, in particular, in particularly for the Australian Grand Prix. Um, how we're standing going into back round here. four. Yeah, back four. Sorry. Thank you. So Verstappen sitting at 69 points, Sergio Perez sitting at 54. Fernando Alonso, 45, Lewis Hamilton, 38, Carlos Sainz, 20, uh, and the constructors, Red Bull, dominating, 123, Austin Martin, 65, Mercedes, 56, Ferrari, 26, and welcome to the top five, McLaren, at 12. Oh, you lose. Oh. One race changes the entire complexion of that team. Wow. Okay. Okay. Just need about a thousand DNS behind you for it to happen. But you hey, lose. take him as you come, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm keen to see. We've got an upgrade package coming in Baku, so hopefully that means these will be well earned fifth place points in the constructors championship. I heard the um, one of the upgrades is that the digital screens for the <laughs> ads are now touch becoming touch screens. You can <laughs> do a barrel roll. You can play uh, candy candy crate or. Candy Crush. Crush. Candy Crush on it, yeah. I was just going to say they're about to go from Windows 98 to Windows XP. <laughs> Big upgrade. <laughs> to be fair, I Windows would... XP is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I would not be surprised if any of this were true. <laughs> and the fact that we're talking about this, like it's Tuesday and the race was Sunday, there's been a lot going on in the news um andrew how about you start with the first timbit that's been going on the, this so far this week that has been happening it's well it, it was interesting because it relates to the aussie gp where after the race russell made a claim that red bull are still sandbagging in terms of their overall performance as he felt that they deliberately held back from their full potential uh at that race you know, especially with max like not you know going more than 10 seconds um being clear uh, because they want to look at limiting, they don't want, RB doesn't want to have them or, or have their dominance limited in the future. They kind of find ironic coming from a Mercedes, a Mercedes driver. Mercedes, yeah. Yeah, they're just butthurt. I, I, and I'm telling you, like, it, you know, it, I, I, I can understand, you know, Russell's new on this team, whatever, but he's on a team that literally dominated and crushed Ferrari's hearts for years. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. They're clearly just Red Bull's clearly destroying the field and they're not going to stop. Do you think Baxter Stappen wants to stop? He probably won't even give Sergio Perez any more wins this season. He's, and I think he, uh, yeah. 
Like hey, uh, my fantasy team last year was Merck sandbaggers. Like, come on, you know, the term is coined after you guys. Yeah. I don't know. I, if there were more performance in that Red Bull, I feel like one, I, I can imagine there might be some, cause to be fair, they haven't really been tested yeah. at this point in the season. No one's really put the gears to them where they got to like kick it into high gear and really fight for it. But at the same time, I feel like you're going for fastest lap and quality. You're trying to pull out everything you can. I feel like we would have seen something a step above where they really trying to push for it, especially like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, on another note, uh, you know, even though that there's been, it was like a in- interesting week at Australia, you know, the Australian Grand Prix is actually under a lot of scrutiny right now. Um, an F1 fan was hit by debris and others invaded the track while the race was going on. So there's a complete investigation going on um, because late track invasion could have had disastrous consequences. We've seen this happen in previous races in er- earlier years where fans have ran onto the track. Even I think there's that one race in Italy where uh, Michael Schumacher was coming around the corner. Um, but the fact that a fan got hit by debris, like I, I still can't get over that. Yeah. Cause you're supposed to like have the walls and those chain link fences at a high enough spot so that, you're protecting, mm-hmm. you know, your fans, right? Because you go to a hockey game, right? The glass and the netting is supposed to protect everybody behind the net. Otherwise, it becomes a significant issue. So I'm surprised that they didn't have adequate um, height of the of the barriers or of that chain link fence to stop the debris. We had a team in the news that got filed a, a legal claim, action claim against them this week. Oh, boy. Yeah, so broke it. Uh, have launched a $149 million $149 million legal action claim against their previous team, Williams, alleging that fraudulent statements were made when signing the sponsorship deal um, in 2019. You know, they were their main sponsor in 2019. And according to Rokit, they were promised a competitive car within the contract, while Williams knowingly didn't have the funds to support this notion. Um, idiots, do your damn homework next time when you do these sponsorship deals. Yeah, like in my mind, 2019 Williams competitive car without a lot of negatives thrown into that string of words, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, that is a fail by your public affairs team to not really provide the proper briefing and understand the landscape of Formula One before you sign a multi million dollar contract. Yeah. It's like kind of read the room. So the lawsuits reflected in the brand value loss since their sponsorship was cut short in 2020 because at that time, COVID just hit. But then there was talks with Williams being sold then to Doralton Ventures, the, you know, the venture capital firm that they're currently owned so that they just cut the ties there on the sponsorship. Um, what I'm not surprised about, though, is that apparently the Rokit boss was given verbal assurances to have the fun, um, to have the about the car's competitors before signing the deal again. You know, get it in writing, bud. Have you not watched like any legal episode? Well, and I also sit there and like people will say just about anything to get certain deals across the line, right? Like depending on when this was signed to, like I just think like I work in sales, you're approaching the end of quarter, end of year, end of month, and you're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give you what you want if you just sign on the dotted line. Like, <laughs> not that I do that often, but it's definitely <laughs> something where I've been like, I will give you three months free if you sign right now and I can get this across the line. So be like, yeah, 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 we'll give you a competitive car if you just sign on the dotted line. Like it seems like a very normal thing to have happen with that verbal assurance there so sell this pen for me erica no i'm kidding um <laughs> let's just take in the fact that williams did get one point that season they competed enough to get a point it says something right um john did you hear the news about charles Leclerc though uh is this regarding where he chased after people for his watch yes or- <laughs> pictures of research pictures of service from the police images of him pursuing the thieves in stores the stores watch last april um, he was driving his Ferrari 88 or 488 Pista in the chase. I'm like, since when do you think you're going to outrun an F1 driver in their own Ferrari? Like, uh, that's just, here's my thing. If you're going to rob someone, be smart about it. Do your research. So, of course, it, 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 they, they took his Richard, his Richard Meal watch, right? Yeah. Which is like one of one. And, you know, there, there's obviously going to be, there's, no, there's, there's nothing else to compare it to. So, you're already going to, in a sense, lose value because you obviously clearly know you don't own this. 
whatsoever. Yeah. And there's so much media uh, about it that they weren't going to get the exact value for it. I think they've been apprehended since, but yeah, I was just about to make uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, they uh, ESPN said that four have been arrested. Uh, Italian police arrested four individuals regarding the watch stealing. And speaking of ESPN, Erica is going to love this. So, oh, is this the thing I don't know about and you want my genuine reaction? Absolutely. So they begin to resurface the Las Vegas Circuit GP, you know, the worst um, right now, so they can make it in racing conditions. That's supposed to be done by August 25th. But according to ESPN, McLaren CEO Zach Brown has challenged Mercedes boss Toto Wolf to a boxing match ahead of the Las Vegas Grand Prix in November. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Uh, quoting, and I talked to Toto about it. We'll see if he's up for it when we go to Vegas. What's Vegas known for? Little boxing match. I'm ready. Put <laughs> me in, coach. <laughs> oh my god i how who do i gotta pay and how much is it gonna cost me <laughs> photo's gonna kill him <laughs> I, I want to be there and watch it happen it's literally gonna be rock and sock and robots and <laughs> ro- robots yeah and he's gonna be out after two hits calling it right now first I'm pretty, ko i'm pretty sure total's got like a solid half foot on him too in terms oh. of height and probably muscle too like I looked that up today because I saw Toto kind of like walking around the paddock on Sunday. And I was like, he is like a head and shoulders taller than everyone else. The guy is 196 centimeters tall. That is like almost six foot six. Like he's but why is Zach Brown wanting to challenge him to a boxing match of all? Because things? he's got American arrogance and he thinks it'll be fun and he doesn't realize that he'll be put in the hospital <laughs> i say like he's gonna show up to the track the next day with the with just like black eye ear absolute two black eyes a busted nose missing a for- tooth <laughs> oh my god it's gonna look like every cartoon character after they get into like a big brawl <laughs> are they gonna turn that into a sports betting match because like i can think of the money that you can make off oh, that. i would throw a mortgage payment down on Toto to win <laughs> ko first round no, but he'll be probably be like minus a thousand. So it's like you're probably you're gonna get your pennies back. That's fine. It's free <laughs> money at the end of the day, in my opinion. <laughs> I want to be there. So this is our speaking of which, this is our call to our sponsor, our future sponsors that the F1 podcast wants to go to Las Vegas to watch this. Um, what are we calling this? Boxing match. Uh, yeah. So please, this what is absolute there? massacre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a couple eye razors this week in the news. Uh, one being this ridiculous new sprint qualifying format that apparently all the teams have agreed to. Gag me. Oh, just disgusting. So if, if anyone hasn't heard, apparently the new qualifying format that the, the teams have quote unquote agreed to is that on Friday, they'll have free practice plus the race qualifying. Then on Saturday, instead of doing FP2, they've replaced it with the sprint qualifying, which then leads to the sprint race on the same day. Oh my! Goodness. And then Sunday will be the race Grand Prix. What the hell is the point of this sprint anymore when you do that? I don't, I, 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 I don't believe this, but apparently Verstappen said he would quit if they implement this, which, but like, I don't, I don't know. Cause like, there is some points to qualifying is, you know, I get it. Some people don't think it's exciting, but like the teams really need the three rounds of qualifying to understand the track, understand the tire temperatures, know where you kind of, your speed is. Um, and, you know, clearly Eric and I can attest to this. When we went to Montreal, the stands were literally packed for Paul, uh, for practice. Yeah. And like, here's my thing too, is if you actually watch a race, there's like a lot of downtime, so to speak, because for the most part, yes, there are gaps and intervals between the cars, but everyone's pretty tightly packed and it takes a fair amount of time for everyone to get around. So like everyone goes by in like 10, 15 seconds, and then there's like a minute and a half of nothing. During a practice session, you get to see everyone in action and same with qualifying. 
a lot more spread out. They're still giving it. They're still sending it. It's still exciting. You're not going to see crazy overtakes and stuff the same way, but like half the fun of going is to see the cars in motion and you just don't like it's a very different impact when they're racing versus when they're like going around for for practice and stuff so i don't know i just don't break what ain't broken and stuff i yeah i don't know and like from from a from an allocation standpoint they better increase the number of engine components that they're allowed because they're just adding additional stress onto the car i also that they tires. wouldn't need it and, and tires like I, whoever thought this format i'm just they've really put no emphasis on qualifying itself because qualifying then dictates where you start in the sprint and that sprint dictates where you're from there's like there's like a logical like movement along how it works but mm-hmm. just to have sprint qualifying for the sprint there's no point they just no. it has there's no value to it at all if anything flip the top eight what they like they do in f2 and f3 is depending on how you qualify flip the top eight for the sprint and then you know race the sprint race and then back on sunday you start you qual you started where you qualified i don't know i just think that's the recipe for disaster and i i think that might like not even have people wanting to watch but i feel like that's there. like a lot to commit to watching during a weekend yeah like, that's like, a lot of time especially as a fan right if you're watching on tv well, and I also think about like how hot it is at some of the races. If you're like there at the track and you're like at practice, I'm like, oh, I've got time. I can go grab a drink from the stand or I can go run to the restroom. Like, I think it's going to get real gross in those grandstands real fast. <laughs> and I don't know if they realize that. <laughs> God, it's more money. I guess it's more money at the end of the day in their pocket for, you know, having people come to the sprint qualifying, you know, they could make more money in their revenue side in their um experience f1 experience aside but again andrew, who knows yes andrew 950 for 355 milliliter heineken beer in montreal i think it was 950 something like that it was overly pray over just i yeah let's go to leaf it's like leaf game spend 20 some odd dollars for like a tall can of beer <sighs> <laughs> but if that wasn't eye raising enough uh oh, no what next how is there even more it's only tuesday it's only tuesday okay well if i don't remember this back in 2008 the singapore grand prix there was an allegation oh, no. where nelson pk jr intentionally crashed into the wall to help then teammate fernando alonso gain places in the um race uh, with that happening, Massa, who was the uh, Ferrari driver at the time, was battling with Hamilton for the World Drivers' Championship. Massa goes into the pits, and back then, they used to have to fuel the car as well during the pit stop as opposed to just the tires, right? So you did tires and fuel, kind of like you do in NASCAR now. Um, there was some new communication or some new system that went in where um, you were to manually flip off like manually switched from red to green light to let the driver know when to go. So Massa goes in, fuel gate, fuel gun goes in or the hose, and someone accidentally hit the green light. As a result, Massa just drives off with the fuel hose still attached in his car. As a result, has to get rolled back to the grid spot, get that knocked out, and then he can go. He finished 13th. Hamilton finished, if I recall, that was the year that Hamilton won the race by one point. And I think Massa was in a position where if he scored points, he would have beaten Hamilton. He would have won. He would have beaten Hamilton in the World Drivers' Championship just based on total results if they tied. Anyways, apparently an interview recently completed with uh, Bertie Ecclestone, who at the time was then the F1 CEO slash owner, was fully well aware of this. And decided not to cancel the results of the GP because they didn't want to have a scandal later down the road. As a result, Massa is now looking into any legal action that can claim that the results of that race should be canceled, which would make him the world driver's champion. And therefore, Lewis would only have six world driver's champions, Chips, not seven Therefore, keeping Shumi the only one to win seven World Drivers Championships in F1 history. This is actually very interesting. And I'm really curious to hear everyone's thoughts on this. 
Okay. Oh can... my God. Anyway. Can I go first? Absolutely, yeah. John. Okay, so this might be controversial, and I am no legal expert on this, <laughs> but um, I wonder if this is only coming up because the sport is so popular now, and maybe like, and obviously, I think is it Bernie that you mentioned his name? Yeah, Bernie Eccleston. Yeah, I, I think he's got already got enough controversy around him, so it's mm -hmm. like it's like a, it's maybe like another thing that just keeps coming up about him. But I'm thinking that personally, I think this is maybe it's like he's willing to go. Felipe Massa, I have a lot of respect for him. Maybe because this sport is so popular now that maybe he's trying to go take advantage of the popularity and see that he, he can go and uh, win this case and a court. Controversial, sure. I'll take it, whatever. But hey, I mean, if you're looking for sponsorship deals or other stuff, World Driving Championship winner Felipe Massa sounds a lot better than just runner up or finalist. So <laughs> it, like, I just, my God, like here, here's my thing. Like, again, also not a legal, legal expert, but I've taken some classes in law and there's something called a statute of limitations. And quite frankly, I feel like if there are more serious crimes out there that would not hold up in court because of the statute of limitations at this point in time, I don't think we should be able to refute this either. Also like, yes, it was an accident, but it still happened. And if Esteban Ocon can get several penalties in a race, or lining up incorrectly at the grid and then serving that penalty wrong and getting another penalty. And that's just a thing that happens and we have to accept it and move on. I think you can accept that a light accidentally turned green. You jumped the gun and like all of this went down and you lost the points and you didn't win the championship. I'm sorry. I just think that you need to accept that stuff happens in the sport. It's not going to be perfect all the time. Move on. But like what, what really confused me, I don't know, maybe if it's his conscience he wants to clear on um, you know being the part of the later part of his life yeah. but how do you just openly admit that to knowing that you knew that the accident was deliberate a b that you know that it should have canceled and c you didn't want it to create a scandal down the road dude it just creates you're just creating a bigger <laughs> scandal down the road at this point that's my thing who was like ah yes we're going to sweep this thing that will have groundbreaking consequences under the rug and nothing nothing will come of it nothing will come of it but like imagine serious? if it does like imagine if it gets overturned and massa becomes the world driver championship and now lewis is down to six yo lewis is gonna lose his oh mind if that happens God. i almost wonder if they do a co-champion at that point and give them both it but mass is gonna push for it he won't accept co-champion if he's going after this now i think it'll just be like the houston asterisk just an asterisk next to the championship yeah so that's the wild week that was in f1 so far oh and it's only tuesday <laughs> only tuesday and we have 20 days until the next race so there is a lot that we talked about today thank you andrew andrew and er erica it's always a pleasure talking to you about formula one I um, want to thank again to our fans for getting us over that 300 mark on Instagram. Sitting at 311 today. Really much appreciate all the support and all the other podcasts um, that have been following us lately. Um, you know, we got a long weekend coming up. So hopefully you, both of you guys get a good break and hopefully our, our listeners get a nice break this long weekend coming up. Um, Andrew, would you like to do the honors to sending us off on this week's episode? Absolutely. Um, everybody, thank you so much for listening to Season 3, Episode 8 of the F1 Podcast. As Erica continues to coddle uh, Ollie, like he's a good boy. Oh, he's so cute. Uh, I like to remind everybody that you can listen to the F1 Podcast on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube. Remind us, please follow us on Instagram. Uh, as John mentioned, we've hit the 300,000, or sorry, three I wish we hit the 300,000 oh, mark. I wish. <laughs> we hit the 300 mark. <laughs> Aiming towards that 300,000 mark one day as we continue to grow. But feel free to share it with your friends. Share it with those who love Formula One. And we'll be back soon with um, maybe another installment of the week that was, as well as our preview of the Azerbaijan GP, where I swear to the F1 gods above that we don't have this ridiculous qualifying, sprint qualifying crap format agree to for that weekend but nevertheless have a wonderful week everybody talk to you soon